The following KSAT 12 special is brought to you commercial free and uninterrupted. Good evening and welcome to this KSAT 12 News special report. I'm Steve Spreester. Homeless, disenfranchised, forgotten. Whatever you call them, every major city struggles with how to help and hide these people. What we hope to do tonight is give a voice to those who are often overlooked and perhaps break down some stereotypes along the way. We also want to look for a uniquely San Antonio solution through the stories of people like Mitch, Vita, Anthony, and so many more that we met out here. People who live on the streets, people who live in the other San Antonio. It's either kill or be killed. Sometimes, you know, you, you sit back and you think, why me? When a man comes by and puts his hands on me, I want to break his neck. You have people who are self-medicating because of their untreated mental illness. I wish I could be a better dad. Trying to be a better dad. In a city of more than a million people, they know the streets like few others, but the areas they frequent are largely hidden from the rest of the Alamo City. Homelessness does not discriminate, okay? Drugs does not discriminate. Okay, you see every and anything go on down there. That's why I refer to this place as the meat grinder. When you get down here, you will learn. You will learn. You will learn how to survive. A block and a half area near the Sam shelter where the remnants of a life spent on the street are everywhere. Hills of clothes and cardboard and the handicaps, the mental illness, the addictions that put these people here are laid bare. We're standing right here, and guys are sitting just right to your right, smoking crack pipe. A lot of people understand that they're one paycheck away, one accident away, one death in the family away from being out here. It's, it's very, very, it's very easy to happen. This can also be a violent place where the search is for food, shelter, a place to rest. There's, there's people out here that work, but they just can't afford to pay, pay rent, you know. Mitchell Brooks is a man who knows the ins and outs of this San Antonio. So did you go to school? You went to school went here? To in Fox Tech here. Okay. I want to go into now um, astro counseling because that's a lot of what I do. On this night, Mitchell helps at a mobile canteen. Sometimes we end up feeding about, about 80 to 90 people out here. Tonight, Mitch is serving pot pie with a side of humanity. Oh, you're, oh, okay, you're over here eating. Eating over here by yourself? Okay, I thought something was wrong. That's why I come over here to see how you're doing. How you been doing, okay? What they got there? Mashed potatoes and pie pie. You get anything to drink? Do you want something to drink? Want me to go get you something to drink? Okay, I'll go get you something. I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's just the older people like that. I really, I really try to watch out for them. What book do you read? Bible. Reading the Bible? I kind of see it as Paul, because he said he learned to be content in every situation he was in. So I got to learn to be content just like Paul, and you know what I'm saying? So God blesses me with, with whatever I need, you know? Right. You identify with Paul? Yeah. I kind of like, I kind of, I just, you know, I think about a lot of stuff that he says in the Word of God. That, 
help me better my life, you know what I'm saying? Help me get out of the situation I'm in. Most of the homeless tend to be kind of invisible if they're here all the time. They're sleeping here and there, and people don't really pay as much attention to them. But the truth is, more should be done because there's some really miserable people out there that need help. The city has an obligation to take care of its citizens, even those that are broke. We have people that sometimes sleep back here, and of course the, the cardboard and so forth and what have you, they, they use that for sleeping. and never realize how soft cardboard can be, <laughs> you know. Got divorced and went downhill, fell into the cracks of drugs, drinking, um, really not wanted. But majority of the people here that I've known um, want to go through transformation and make something out of themselves and just, like I said, fit in and be wanted. How old are you? Man? I'm 27. 27. Thanks. You're welcome. Lots of folks who are out on the streets have incredible stories. They're rich, they're diverse, they're compelling. And if people are not fearful and they can just say hello when they walk down the street, then that'll make a huge difference. Do they treat everybody with dignity and respect? That's the key. And, uh, and we will be transformed as people of San Antonio if we treat the homeless with dignity and respect. And we'll find that they, in turn, will treat us with dignity and respect as well. As she said, everything's in there is important. You know, it's wintertime. I don't want to be out the street, no. I, I want a job, you know, but Sometimes it seems like things is just not working in that, you know, in that area at that moment. So sometimes when you can't stay with your people, you have to do what you have to do to survive. You know, my immediate family is, is gone. You know, my brother was the last one that lost him in May. He has three boys and a girl here, you know. It's hard for them to understand me being out here. You know, my, my oldest nephew saw me out front about nine months ago. And he, he told me, he said, man, I'm tired of you being out here. You know, it upsets me. And I can understand where he's coming from, you know. You can sleep here because yeah. the church has set it up, but you couldn't yeah. sleep anyplace else here. No. You're not supposed no, to? No, you're not supposed to, but people would do what they have to do to survive or to sleep. They will sleep somewhere, yeah. you know. And, and you got some people who will go to sleep knowing they're not supposed to be there. They prefer to be in jail. You and I are standing here having an intelligent conversation. Uh -huh. I imagine there are a lot of people who think they couldn't do that with somebody who lives on the street. Yeah, there's a lot of them that wouldn't. Sometimes I suck it up. Sometimes I've, I've cried. You know, it's, I'm not, you know, I'm no Iron Man. You, you know what I mean? I'm very soft-hearted in my own way. But I do know that there's love out here. have to have a lot of cushion that seems hard on your body, no matter what your age. How long have you lived on the street, Vita? Over a year. Vita shattered her hand in a restaurant accident that left her homeless, unable to live on her workers' comp check. She is now an expert on the benefits of cardboard and sleeping bags and the harsh realities of living on the street. When a man comes by and puts his hands on me, I want to break his neck. Is it hard being a woman? Yes. Most of the men out here think that a woman out on the streets is a prostitute. And they come by and they feel of her when she's asleep. They ask her to uh, sell their bodies to them. They do all sorts of things. And it's not right. People don't realize that there are a lot of educated people that are homeless. Very educated people. And uh, when you had a swimming pool in your backyard and a four-bedroom house, a car, and almost anything you wanted, it's hard.
Oh, I just trying to raise up funds for the homeless, and uh, I myself, I'm homeless. And what, what did you come up with the idea to, to do a run? Uh, it was a uh, last year, about two, a year and a half. The Lord, I had a revelation. The Lord told me I used to run a uh, high school track at Gus Country in High School back in the seventies. Back in the seventies, I, I did a lot of meets, and I think the Lord was training me back then, back in the seventies, to do this right now on the two thousands. Uh, yes, sir. It was uh, this year in March. This year in March of uh, 05. Uh, I did all the way, all the way to Corpus Christi. Uh, I call it my candle. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. 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 Hi, Jeff.
I mean, he's he's lost, you know. So you we know. we let him sleep. Uh, untreated mental illness is the cause for about a third of the folks who are on the streets, and mm -hmm. uh, and the the truth is is that in their uh, mental illness, then many of the folks don't folks will not uh, behave in the kind of ways to where they can help themselves and they can move themselves online until they get stabilized with their medication they're they're gonna be uh, condemned to the homelessness from uh, from this point forward how about drug and alcohol addiction how does that fit in? drug and alcohol addiction would be about a third of the drug population drug. is active in drug and alcohol abuse and there's a lot of crossover too People who uh, who can't stand to hear the voices in their heads from schizophrenia sometimes can quiet the voices with 24 ounces of malt liquor, mm -hmm. and so you have people who are self-medicating because of uh, of their untreated mental illness. Because they're falling through the cracks. Because they're falling through the cracks and there's no place to go. He has warrants in Arkansas. Intimidation. That's what that was about. And they uh, post up like that for no apparent reason. Why? People are sitting there eating, you know. You plan on buying them something else to eat? What are you going to do? Are you anti-homeless? Absolutely not. Um, you know, I, I, just, I just don't think it exists. This was about two things. One, using one tool that we have to help an industry or an economy to generate more revenue. Now, whether you approve of that or not, that's a philosophical difference. Mm -hmm. The mindset behind it was that this was a piece of the puzzle in being able to make an environment conducive to generating revenue. And that's that's one part of it. In in that way, absolutely they have been successful. Now if you assume, Now when you say that you're talking about the businesses. Correct. It helps the businesses because they don't have to deal with some of these things well, outside their front doors. It, not it, it, indirectly. It's not a business or a kind of business. It's just again an environment. Today, do we have enough money to solve the problem of homelessness in San Antonio? The answer is no. From a business perspective, you're downtown, you're not far from Travis Park, not far from Travis Park Methodist, it's declared itself sort of a safe haven for some of these people. What kind of problems does that create for you as a business owner? Here's where we start to get into problems of philosophy and opinion. I think the city and county commissioners were wrong to pass the laws that they passed, and they know they were. But they're not going to change it until somebody fights. But the, there are people around here that don't open their bathrooms and they need to know what it feels like for a person to go, for them to go in this place and ask to use their bathroom and them telling you can't do that. How can you tell a person you can't use the bathroom? It's wrong. I, I, if someone needs to use the restroom, my restroom, have at it. But that's, that's just me personally. Travis Park Methodist Church, one of the few places downtown where homeless people can sleep without being ticketed. Mitch lives inside and works with those who sleep outside. This is a safe zone. Is this is not? a safe zone. This is a place where you can come and find refuge. Different guy. Sweep under the carpet type of thing. Uh, if we don't, if we don't, we put them further back in the darkness so we don't see them. It sometimes gets you so angry and so upset where you just want to run out of the middle of the street and cry sometimes because what you're seeing done to your fellow man. You can see this cardboard right there. I used to sleep right here. And I would spread leaves out all right here. And I would put leaves all over here, all the way back here. And this is where I would sleep. What are you thinking right now as you're standing here? Oof. It's 
Yeah, I feel lost. I feel like there is no one out here. All of us out here are not just a bunch of drug addicts and alcoholics. We're not. A lot of us out here are very loving, caring people. You just got to get to know us. You know, for me, I'm, I'm educated, I have a college degree, and look where I ended up, you know, through drugs and alcohol and, and not doing what I should have been doing, I ended up out here. But it doesn't mean that, that, it, 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 that, uh, 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 that it can't happen to you. From drug addict to homeless advocate to our guide, on this night, Mitch finds people behind warehouses, under bridges, sitting in the shadows. But well, where are you gonna sleep tonight? Right behind KSN, so. Okay? Yeah. You're gonna mm -hmm. sleep right behind KSN? Right behind KSN. Alright. Mm -hmm. That's fine with me? <laughs> I've been for uh, two years. Two years you've been behind there? Yeah. That's uh, Jesus Christ laying there and someone didn't give him shelter. That's basically what it boils down to. children here that are going through things that they shouldn't go through you know it's it's it's, it's really sad especially for a city like San Antonio come on man this is this is home this is the most loving and compassionate city and I've been to all the major cities and this is the most compassionate city I've ever been in you know we uh we don't take care of our own we don't take care of our own we're worried too much worried about Mayosa, Cinco de Mayo the parades and all this, you know, what about one day putting on something for the homeless people? This is your one time to say something in one sentence to people of San Antonio. What would you say? Be of God, not God. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. Jesus says, help your fellow man, help your fellow man. We have not done too much as a city to help them. We are um, allocating through various programs $1 million, which sounds like quite a bit of money, and it's better than nothing for sure. You would think that it's really just about, you know, I have a responsibility to folks who are homeless. Here's the money. Here are the programs. That's not the way I look at it. The people that are sitting at home that are going to be watching this or reading about this, they really need to come out here and 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 uh, and actually see what's going on, see what the city is doing to its own citizens. Sleeping here is nothing. If you don't have the love of your people, your your real family, that's homeless. Experience people is flesh and blood. The average citizen, uh, when they're walking down the street, could speak to folks who look different than them. The average citizen could treat folks like human beings and say that, uh, that uh, engage with them, talk with them, and, and find out their stories. I used to spread leaves throughout here to, for alarm purposes to make sure if someone walked up on me, I could hear them. They estimate about a third of the homeless have some sort of drug or alcohol addiction. Another third probably untreated mental illness, and another third just choose to be there. Right. They're hardcore street people. This is what they want to do. Right. This is how they want to live their life. Do you agree with that? 
It, it doesn't seem unreasonable or out of the realm of possibility. Uh, I don't know enough about the percentages of folks who are homeless. It's easier to kind of overlook the homeless. This is family. This is love down here. I mean, regardless of what some of the people might say, you know, all these people want down here is just someone to recognize them. That's all. They're a face. Finally tonight, this being the holiday season, we are very aware that this alleyway isn't a manger with hay, but it's also clear for some in San Antonio, there's no room in the inn, and some will be spending their nights in places just like this this holiday season. We hope we've given you a glimpse into the lives of San Antonio's homeless, and we'd like to thank the people who shared their stories with us tonight. We hope we did them justice. We also want to thank you for watching. For all of us in KSAT 12, Good night. But I do know that there's love out here.